Put your hands together one time. I want you to get together. I want you to get together. Mr. and Clown Connection. Um, something I've, and people who follow my channel will know about, it's a series I have going where I've found uh, archetypal similarities, symbolically speaking, um, for the clown, um, the westernized image of a clown, and even many eastern versions of jesters and clowns are very reminiscent of descriptions of the Nephilim. Um, do you have any thoughts or input on that kind of idea of the jester, the clown, and, you know, the Venetian mask, let's say, and things like this? Where do you think that yeah. came from, that symbology? Well, I think you're probably an expert in this area, and for me, it's kind of a off sort of shoot area, which I, I find fascinating. And uh, um, but yeah, definitely, this whole clown, trickster, jester, joker, fool allegory mm -hmm. is directly connected with prehistory and the religions that roll down through history mm -hmm. uh, through magic and in other forms and rituals and occult rituals and, and is uh, is part of that whole spurious system and again it is a global wide phenomenon it's not just a European one it has a European flavor but whether yeah. or not it it is in um, Let's say Native North America, you have medicine men. Mm -hmm. um, you, you have shamans around the world. You have, have magi. These these are all sort of similar uh, orders, mm -hmm. and all take their roots back to the same level. So I'm not sure quite where you'd like me to go with this, but what I will say is is that uh, when you look at theater masks or clown faces, you have some commonality here. And you have like these white uh, background faces, uh, whether it's the whole body or it's just the face, and some of them are very demon-esque. Uh, this goes back to a reflection of the demon that's within, and mm -hmm. whether or not that's a possession or it's an avatar, which is all, again, part of the spirit of the trickster, uh, as it goes back into prehistory. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a reflection, in, in by, for the most part, when you see the evil sort of clown sort of look of a demon, right, or mm -hmm. the, the mass that they have in um, Chinese theater, uh, and in yeah. uh, in India, you have the same sort of look in some of the statues, and these are the bodiless spirits of the Nephilim or the hero within. Just as we mentioned that um, hero worship, Nephilim were the heroes of old. They were the right. famous ones of renown. They're called heroes in in Greek mythology uh, because uh, hero in the ancient understanding of the word hero isn't what we understand it today. It was understood as the offspring of a god and a human, mm. a demigod. And these are the bodiless spirits of these heroes. So anyway, just a quick blush and decide where you want to go with it from that, because we can get into it in, in well, more detail. But <laughs> you, mentioned, you mentioned briefly there about um, possession and um, how clowns are intimately related with uh, the disembodied Nephilim, the demons who want to possess people and, you know, manifest in people's bodies. And uh, now... I, th I think a lot of magicians, obviously, it's known that they make deals with demons in order to gain power and give the illusion that they have the power, you know, um, for usually sacrifice or some kind of, you know, ritual that has to be performed every month or something like that. Um, and obviously, there's one particular type of um, magic in uh, Japan, I think it is, which is uh, face changing. And it shows yeah. people wearing incredibly psychedelic, multicolored garbs and clothing, wearing incredibly bizarre looking masks just multicolors of all patterns and shapes and they would quickly in a split second just change the mask by flipping something under the face like the hand yeah. and they would do that over and over and over again and go through about 100 different designs and it's it is impossible but what i've noticed is yeah. that they are manifesting this um fractal maze matrix type otherworldly clothing um reptilian in nature like serpent skin can be pearlescent and multicolored something to bear in mind there as well um and the, obviously they it seems like maybe they are representing the Nephilim in order to venerate the Nephilim in order to gain power from the Nephilim to perform such a feat. But then there's this also this thing that happened last year where people were dressing up as clowns and scaring the living daylights of pe out of people, chasing them with knives, you know, um, the creepy clown sightings of October 2016. Um, and I found that such a bizarre thing. What, what would possess a person to do such a thing? And then it clicked. 
Um, I think maybe what we were seeing there was a physical manifestation, albeit in a very crude way of a clown costume, representing the very entity which is possessing such people to do such things. Um, a true worship and veneration, I guess. Um, now, the reason I say Nephilim look like clowns is because um, the, the stereotype clown is a white skin, wild red hair, and with a uh, red around the mouth, like blood, so cannibalistic in nature, and a big bulbous red nose, which um, if you go to festivals of Basel in Switzerland, every year they do a festival, and big-headed, pale-skinned, crazy-haired masks are put on people, which are, are huge, with big mouths and big bulbous red noses. So maybe, I think, um, and the reason I'm asking you, Gary, is you know a lot about the Nephilim. What is with this pale skin and red-haired Nephilim <laughs> style? Is, is there a link there between that and the archetype clown? Yeah, there is. And when you... Uh, get into the de details of what some of the Nephilim look like other than the obvious facial features that we had talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. um, they were known to have very pale skin. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why, you know, the Tuatha Dé Danann of the fairy people is a connection there from an allegorical perspective because those are the fair folk and the fairy people. And they also had two sort of distinct sort of hair colors and eye colors as they go down uh, throughout history, uh, through whether or not they're the Aryans or the Tuatha Dé Danann, and both are related. So you, you have the red-haired and hazel-eyed noble Celt, uh, which you know uh, Dracula is basically based on. Yeah. And the drinking of blood is another notable uh, Nephilim trait. Mm -hmm. um, and you also have the blonde-haired, blue-eyed one. And so when you see giants that are being discovered with their bodies, even though their skeletons and things don't tend to last that long, mm -hmm. um, you see certainly a number of them in North America and in Peru where they have this red hair. Uh, and if you get into uh, uh, Atlantean mythology, again, they'll describe both of those hair colors for the ancient uh, Kishimaya history. So mm -hmm. that red hair is one of the significant uh, descriptions and the hazel eyes with the pale skin uh, one of the two types that sort of come down through prehistory yeah brilliant yeah uh, obviously uh, thanks for saying that it just gives me more uh, things to talk about in future videos you know about specific examples of them with red hair I understand there was a, yeah. a very recent altercation between a, a, an Indian tribe who had to deal with red-haired giants, um, I think, eating yep. their children again, cannibalizing their tribe, yep. and they smoked them out in the cave they lived, and I think bodies were found in there at a later date and removed by the Smithsonian, I think, or something like that. Um, but that's, a, that's yeah. a recent case of an altercation with Nephilim, which may still be here. And there's another popular one that came up recently about a in the 90s in the Middle East, um, a tr an army squad came across a giant which killed a few of them. And they managed to capture, kill yeah. it and capture it, and that had red hair and pale skin too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and so let's make a couple more connections to sort of underline that because the modern clown is just sort of an evolving sort of picture of where all this sort of comes from. Yeah, caricature is the word I use. It's, caricature, it's yeah, like cartoon idea, but it's, isn't it? As I mentioned, it's rooted in the uh, the trickster spirit of prehistory and that's why it's related to jesters and jokers and fools and shamans and magicians mm -hmm. um, but I'm jumping forward there but it's rooted in uh, the spirit which is of gods demigods and heroes right and as I talked about um, uh, it's it's they have a spirit that's within them in this occult sort of nature so they're either being possessed or their avatar and they were all tricksters and shapeshifters and or monsters and givers of knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. And creators of chaos. Now what's important about all of that is that when we look at um, these these beings that are, are coming down, um, they are, are being represented in, uh, in these sort of character looks as being part of that whole look that comes down out of prehistory. And as we connect that back to the two different colors of hair, and you don't see much for the blonde hair for some reason, but go back into, let's say, um, Norse uh, prehistory, 
Mm -hmm. uh, and you have the Asgard gods. And, and, and amongst that one god is, is a particular one called uh, Loki. Mm -hmm. And Loki is a giant from Jutland, and he's included amongst the Asgard gods, and he is a trickster god, and he is a shapeshifter. And you've got these shapeshifter gods uh, and trickster gods all over the world, and some of them include Hermes and some of that, as, yeah. as that sort of god is one of those aspects of them. Prometheus, Set, Simlong, Vela, Anrita, Lug. Uh, we talked about feathered serpents that they're all sort of related in this aspect. And uh, it's also interesting, uh, you know, just connect, I love to connect dots, is Loki is, is the root sort of name for Luke Skywalker because Loki was known as Loki Skywalker. Ah, and, interesting. And again, you get that alien mythos that's sort of mixing in there. So a lot of the names uh, in, in, uh, in entertainment come out of, come out of prehistory. Yeah. Um, but... This, this trickster spirit has the ability because to connect portals because these sacred clowns, as they're known as in the sort of the, the shaman or the religious or the magi aspect, of, are in continual contact and talking with uh, um, these uh, demons and, mm -hmm. and whether they're possessing them or they're just communicating with them. And it can or open portals to chaos. Yeah. And before creation. And again, we're, when we talk about CERN or we talk about portals and all the different reaches where portals go through, fairy mythology, alien mythology, and now all of a sudden we look at these clowns as, as being uh, these religious leaders as shamans that go back to this religion of Enoch and Atlantis and the antediluvian epoch. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden you just start to go, oh my God, how far does this reach? Well, if you go through all ancient tribes from um, spanning from the you know China, Australia, Aborigines, um, all African tribes, North American, South American tribes, the Druids and things like this, they all have a jester archetype character within their, their gods, and and that the people would do rituals, dress up as, and um, they were always very bizarre looking, psychedelic, clownish like creatures, um, very similar. They're usually black and white is a common motif across all of them. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Having two horns which are wobbly and furry bushy skin or, or like some of them are just balls of hair it looks like and that's a very common theme as well again another significant connection to nephilim is as they were known as being very hairy beings that's it yeah exactly exactly and another thing which i found this is something i've kind of connected is uh if you consider a carnival or um, a, a fun fair as this place where there's a big wheel of light spinning constantly and there's many lights flashing and multicolored bulbs going off all over the place and it is the natural habitat of the clown, physically speaking. Um, so symbolically speaking, does that represent the kind of world they're in as spiritless body, bodiless spirits? You know, this, the fractal psychedelic realm people experience in ayahuasca, you know, or on DMT, let's say. And it's regularly... Um, reported by secularists, people who don't know, have a clue anything about this, that they see jesters when they take these um, consciousness transferring drugs. Um, jesters are common and they usually mess with them, attack them, yep. swear at them, joke with them, you know, tell them lies, tell them all sorts of things, contradict themselves, joke, dance and laugh around whoever's in that realm for, for, for the 10 minutes they're there, you know. And these common commonalities of the carnival, you know, this this place where there's a giant wheel, the portal spinning, if you put it on a time lapse, yep. you know, it's a constant wheel of light. So if it's yep. I don't know if it's uh, done on purpose, but it seems like it some kind of a, it could be, yeah, or it could be um, the, the spiritual manifesting in the physical in some way, you know, uh, this place. They are always in inundating water. us in every environment where that belief system is positioned with its allegories and symbolism. So you think it's intentional then? Well, that's interesting. Yeah, it could be, you know, I, I do wonder sometimes what what is this, what is spiritual in nature and what is uh, really man made, you know, and that's something yeah. that could be intentional, and I can see how it was done. Another thing which I do think is specifically designed and intentional is uh, and nothing against the homosexual community, you know, I, I love them all and I want them all to be saved like everyone else, but the movement of gay pride, this this idea of having a festival going through the streets, and you see these usually the people that are dressed in clownish, colourful, feathered, bright clothing with the rainbow flag going all over the place. Not dissimilar from the multicoloured pattern seen at a fun fair or a carnival, um, which I believe again represents the realm within the Nephilim, you know, where they are disembodied right now. 
looking like jesters and clowns, you know, that's kind of yeah. probably their form right now. The psychedelic coloured clothing and patterns represent that, I think, like the diamond shape or the Harley Quinn pattern. But you see this pride festival and obviously the Nephilim were, is another word for, for pride, proud, you know, they were very proud over yes. the top of self-loving narcissistic race of people. And then you apply, you know, a pride parade to these people who are dressing like clowns and jesters, you know, celebrating yeah. sin, as we would call it, in debauchery, walking naked through the streets where children can see them, involving children in this type of thing. You know, obviously that's, I don't want to get on that now, you know, and go down that debate. But symbolically, symbolically speaking, I see it again, the, the Nephilim manifesting themselves in the, in the physical through people, you know, acting in such a way and dressing in such a way, just like people dressing up as creepy clowns to scare them. Why the clown? And why has it been released recently as well, coinciding yeah. with this? You know, is it is it well, symbolically it, saying the Nephilim are returning? Is that what it's all trying to say? Yeah. yeah. Well, it seems to be in their belief system, they have to tell us what they're going to do beforehand. And they keep their mythos and their religion and their beliefs alive mm -hmm. uh, continually and in all, all sorts of aspects. And people don't know, just as you described about all of the imagery that's in the... Uh, uh, the gay movement uh, that, that is all typical demon and Nephilim imagery. They just mm -hmm. don't realize um, Well it looks so beautiful that, doesn't it? So colorful and so bright yeah. uh, like if Lucifer poses as an angel of light you know, no Marvel Yeah. Right? and again Marvel yeah. magazine you know Marvel which is about superheroes which are modern day Nephilim you know referencing, yeah. referencing that very quote that Lucifer poses as an angel of light so it, it literally yeah. is all pervasive. We're getting into that idea again, aren't we? That how do you explain something so big so quickly? <laughs> because yeah, you, look it just goes on and on and on and on and on. And as you get into that superhero thing, I mean, those are definitely reflections of, of the Nephilim. And mm. you know, and again, sort of connecting that with the clown thing and the history of the clowns. Um, and you may have covered this, but I'll, I'll throw it out in case it hasn't been covered. Oh, go ahead. Um, is that you know, as the gestures and the jokers are evolving through the middle ages and they're trying to hide from the catholic inquisition and being called witches and they're still being part of the court and they're still trying to keep the uh the king uh reminded through humor of his fallibility and yeah. sinful nature as they believe in their belief system if for whatever reason they fell out of disfavor as a gesture or joker of the royal court um, they would be mutilated and typically mutilated in the face. Hmm. So now you roll that forward to Batman and the Joker. Uh -huh. And not only does he have that Joker title, not hmm. only does he have the white face and the clown type face, he has the mutilated face as hmm. they roll this allegory forward. And of course, you know, Batman is just another superhero, and Gotham it comes from Gotham. And as you go through the, the Batman series, it is absolutely inundated with an allegory that even associates New York City or Gotham, as they have it, with Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I'll write my book, The Connections of Nephilim to Sodom and Gomorrah, not only just with with uh, homosexuality, but all sorts of sexual violations and other corruptions, and that they were involved there. Uh, they tell us their history over and over and over and over and over. Mm -hmm. People just don't recognize it. Well, isn't, isn't that such a fascinating allegory with the Joker, though? The idea that um, the the Joker falls out of grace with the king, the, the, the system of authority, and is mutilated and cast down into a pitiful state yeah. as a result. That is an allegory of the Nephilim, you know, who were given great power yeah. and abused it hideously and were therefore stripped of their immortality and given a scar forever, essentially, you know. It's the same allegory, isn't it? Very it, it really is. It really is. Hands together one time. I want you to get together. I want you to get together.